we are gonna talk today about one-to-ones. So a one-to-one -one is a get to know you meeting. And why they call it one-to-ones, cause it's one person <laughs> to one person. So when I say one-to-ones, all I mean is get to know you meetings. And I wanna talk today about how to pick the one-to-ones, how you can structure them a little bit. And we're also gonna talk about what type of one-to-one -one meetings there are and how do you know when to eject? <laughs> I'll run as fast as you can away from one. So one-to-ones, when I started in networking 20 years ago, was all about go meeting at a coffee shop, meeting for lunch, going to their office. It was always like this face-to-face. -face. Now, one-to-ones can be done over Zoom, and I love it because <laughs> I can wear my fuzzy socks, I can get my coffee, not pay crazy high prices for it, and I love it, and to me, it's a lot more effective. You can also do one-to-ones on a phone. Now, I am not as much a fan of the phone because you can't read the body language and see what they're doing. Also, sometimes people will distract themselves and do something else while they're on the phone. So video, you actually get to, to see them. So I do suggest doing a in-person or a video one-to-one. -one. You get to know people. Um, after you create a relationship, you can do check-in calls on phone. I do have clients who take these tools and they do it on phone one-to-ones and that's fine as as well. Just know that you're missing that that piece and it it sometimes takes a little, little bit longer. So with one-to-ones, I believe there's four different types of one-to-ones and a lot of times you don't know what it is until you get into it. And we're gonna talk about that in a second. I also think that one-to-ones should be at least one hour long. Now my one-to-ones were usually an hour and a half. And what I, because I like giving people time, I do. I was raised by a mother who has a quality time love language. So I like to make sure I give people that quality time. And that's the same with one-to-ones or my consulting clients or whatever it is. So with at least an hour, if it's less than that, I think that it's a speed one-to-one -one. and how you can optimize doing speed networking and set your schedule up that way is another video. If you're interested in that, let me know and I can do that. Why I say an hour is that if you have 15 minutes of catch up, how are you, how is family, the weather is super cold, whatever it is, you need that 15 minutes and then you have 15 minutes of closing. You need to have that closing follow up time because that's your next action time. So are we sending another meeting, are we doing a phone call, am I referring you to someone, am I sending you that book or article we talked about? So having that time. If you do that, that only gives you 15 minutes each to talk about your business. So that's why I say you at least need that hour. I usually do an hour and a half. I did my schedule where I had one-to-one -one set every even hour. Um, and how you can optimize your schedule for Get to Know You meetings is another video. If you're interested in that, let me know. I'm happy to do it. I love schedule optimization, 100%. But if you have this time, you know, set aside for someone to get to know them, you want to pick people that could be a really good benefit for you. It is okay to say no to a one-to-one. -one. It's okay to be like, man, that is not gonna be worth it for me. Now, you don't wanna tell that to the person to be like, oh, I'm never ever gonna use you, your stuff is crap. Uh, <laughs> and you can kind of move around it. So you can do that, but either doing them in speed one-to-ones, which I said I can do a video on if you want. You can do it in group one-to-ones where you have a lunch, you have multiple people and you you all kind of share and talk. You can do it over a time that you you know you're you know you're gonna be driving so you can listen to their spill. You can you can value them without being rude to them. Um, but no, don't say yes to a one-to-one -one that doesn't work for you. And a working for you is someone who you think can be your client, you can be their client, you can be referral partners. So if you look at their business and you're like, I'm not a client. I can't easily refer you, you can't easily refer me, you're not my client, then I would suggest not doing that one-to-one. -one. Now, if you figure it out, you're like, yeah, I think this is someone who could be a good fit for me and I'm gonna give them an hour to two hours of my time. When you're in that one-to-one, -one, you'll find that it's probably one of four things will happen. And this, I've never shared this before publicly. This is something I've shared with clients for, oh, probably 20 years. It's probably took probably 15 by the time I really got to see this happen. I've not found a, a situation that has gone outside of these norms. So when you're in a one-to-one, -one, one thing's gonna happen. Either one, it's a shut up and listen meeting. And I know that sounds super harsh, but we're gonna get into that. One is a referral meeting, a sales meeting, or a buyers meeting. 
And like I said, you really don't know what it's going to be until you're usually sitting in front of them. And I've had ones I thought were one thing and they turn into another. So don't go in putting constraints on this meeting. Just know it's going to end up one of these four. The first one is shut up and listen. This is a meeting where the person is so busy talking about themselves and their business that they don't ask you who you are or what you do. I'm a big believer that you do not say what you do or force it in. If they are so busy talking about himself, what it tells me is that they're always too busy talking about themselves. And if they're always too busy talking about themselves, they're never gonna have the chance to really listen. And it's within the listening of others that you find their pain point and you can refer them. One of the reasons I'm such a good person at referring others to others is because I'm listening for what they're struggling with and then I know who can make an impact. But if you're not listening, you won't hear it. So if they're not listening, if they're not asking, if they're not really inquiring, there's no way that they're doing that with others and there's not gonna have a chance to refer you. So the best thing you can do for your time and your money is to shut up and listen. And then when they're done, you say, that's so awesome, I like, and put in something you like that they said, I can't wait to see you at the next networking event, or I wish you really good luck with that, you know, or hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run, I got something errand I gotta do before this next meeting, something. Because it's not worth any more of your time to sit there. Um, you can say, I, I have a text I need to answer, an email. I always have a text or email I can answer. So that one works good too. Do not force someone ever to hear about your business because they don't care. And that's okay. It's nothing bad against them. Now, if you're listening to, to this and you're like, man, yeah, that meeting, I, I really don't remember what they did. You might be that person that is constantly talking about your business and it's good to learn to ask someone about them and what did they do. The second type of meeting is a referral meeting. A referral meeting is one that you're in and you're like, oh my goodness, like I can for you, you can refer me. So that should become a strategy meeting. And by strategy meeting, it is, okay, when someone says this, I want you to say this. You need to spell it out for your referral partners. They are so busy with their own thing. They're already in the midst of it. So you really need to give them a situation and verbiage to use. So for example, for me, I say when someone says, I have so many ideas and I have no idea where to start, you say, you need to talk to Rachel. Or when someone says, I want to grow and I just don't know what's there that's not letting us get to that point, it's time to talk to Rachel. Or, you know, I have big plans, but I'm not sure the first step. It's time to talk to Rachel. So teaching them and giving them that verbiage, when someone says, I love this house, but I really hate this basement, it's time to talk to my contractor. You know, so, they, but the thing is that the real estate agent might not think about that unless you plant in their brain a situation and then how they need to refer. And you say, just send a text message. You, you tell them exactly the best way to refer. Send an email, you know, text me their information, I'll reach out. Lay it all out. Make it so simple for people to refer you and they will. Make it hard and they won't. So first meeting is to shut up and listen because they don't really care. Two is a refer referral meeting. And I'm going to back up. They might care. They just might not be trained enough to, really, to be in that listening mode for others yet because it is a personal development space. So shut up and listen, referral. Third one is buying. I have been in meetings where I've been like, oh my goodness, I need what you do. <laughs> so there's been one-to-one -one meetings that I have realized that I'm the buyer. And then I start asking them questions and I start getting into what they, they want, you know, I need and what they sell and how do we do it. That's fine. The third one is that you become sales mode. I have been in meetings that ha I thought were just going to be a get to know you meeting. And then suddenly I realized that they want to work with me, you know, because I don't go in just assuming everyone does because I have a very specific clientele that I like to work with and they have to be ready. So I usually don't know if someone's ready until conversation starts popping up. So there has been times I've been in meetings and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a sell meeting. At that time, pivot into sales. So I'm going to recap because I don't know how these 10 minutes go so fast, but they do. When you're, make sure that you have networking meetings with people that are going to be good referral partners or clients for you. 
pivot in the meeting, figure out if it's a shut up and listen, if it's a referral meeting, and then you go into strategy. If it's a buying meeting, then you start buying or sales meeting, you sell. And the last thing is always have a follow up. Always have a next step and make sure you follow that step because that's how you move from visibility with them to credibility to profitability to know, like, and trust. And that is the whole reason of networking and one-to-ones is to move people through that pathway.